G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope that you are super well. Today I am here to talk about a very exciting new lens from Nikon, the 135 1.8 Plenar. And this is more than S-Class. This is such an exciting release, and this may well be the release that many of us have been talking about for quite a number of years. Any lens, and I don't know if there'll be any more, but any lens that's given the plenar. Engraving is a lens that only can exist on Z mount. So here we have finally the lenses that we have been talking about for years, lenses that we called the exotics, the lenses that would leverage Z. And here it is, here it is in my hands for the very first time. And this lens, even so, it's very, very similar to look at and feel, look and feel, is very similar to the 85 millimeter. But what I'm being told is, planner is next level. And what is it about the Plinger lens that makes it next level? Well, I'm sure there are a lot of things, but I think the main part is a larger image circle. And what that means, it means a few different things. I think one of the first and most important things is, it means this lens, when wide open at 1.8, is sharp all the way to the corners. Not only that, but what does it do to our bokeh balls? Well, it allows them to be rounded all the way to the edges of frame. As anybody would know who watches this channel, the 85mm is an absolutely extraordinary lens. The 85mm 1.2, here we have it here. Extraordinary lens. And if you're keeping up with the latest, DxO Mark have just rated the 85 1.2 the sharpest lens they've ever seen. This lens, I believe, will be at another level altogether. Extraordinary. And I was just thinking before recording this video, you might be thinking about getting, say, a ZF or some other brand of camera. And we talk about all the different specs that make up our cameras, that make up our choices. But perhaps the most significant spec of a ZF or a Z camera is the mount itself, because this mount allows you to get this lens. As it's been described to me, we have the Nikon S-Class lenses, which we would all agree are extraordinary. And Plenar is simply a level above that. Let's get into the details of this lens, because the details are pretty exciting when you have basically created next level. This is level up beyond S-Class, which were already extraordinary, and Nikon are doubling down yet again to give us even more. Let's start with the speed of this lens. Well, it has two SDM motors, which make it super fast vignetting, which is pretty much completely removed with this lens. And that's not being done with electronic trickery, that is being done optically. When it comes to those bokeh balls, you don't need to stop down to make them round. They will continue to stay round even when you are wide open at 1.8. And with this lens, color fringing has been reduced to the absolute minimum. And we will test that out in an upcoming video. And you will find that the bokeh balls are very, very smooth. And along with that, the instance of onion rings has pretty much been eliminated at the edge of frame due to the fact that we are getting rounded bokeh balls all the way to the edge of frame. Not only does Planner have the larger image circle, but what that means is, is that we're using more the center of the glass. And what that does is give us the absolutely best rendering, creating a super sharp lens with an absolutely ridiculous level of detail. And what this also allows for is a uniform level of light across the frame, which I suppose is similar to what we would have with the removal of vignetting. And this lens, it features the mesoamorphous coating, which is even better than previous coatings, reducing internal flare within the lens. 
So even, even in the most difficult of situations when you're looking into direct sunlight or direct light, this lens will deliver extraordinarily low levels of flare. I just can't, can't wait to test it out. And even under the harshest lighting conditions, we still get clear, sharp images, which is, which, which is of course something that I have seen with the 85mm 1.2. But again, I think the 135 1.8 is next level. We wouldn't normally think of a 135mm lens as an action lens, but this lens is fully capable of sports action and wildlife photography due to those two STM focus motors. And along with the lenses being super fast at focusing, they are also very, very quiet. If you are photographing birds or wildlife, they will not be distracted by lens noise. Okay, let's take a little bit of a look at this lens close up and get a real sense of it. What I'm gonna do is take off the lens hood and we can see here that there's an absolutely beautiful design. Planner is engraved on the front of the lens. It's not just painted on. Let's take a look at that front element. Absolutely extraordinary. Wow, wow, wow. Those apertures, we'll have to fire that up to have a look at those apertures. This lens will work superbly on a ZF, Z8, Z9. And of course, oh, that feels good. That, that feels just about perfect. It certainly has some heft to it. This package, just under two kilos, I think it'd be 1,800, 1,900 grams in total. Feels good, and I can already tell it's going to be a powerhouse. Anyway, there it is. There's a look at it. Let's have a look at this aperture opening up on camera. Yeah, lightning fast. That's extraordinary. Let's have a look at in video mode how the stabilization feels in video. And as we would expect, very, very smooth. Wow. <laughs> there's something that these cameras do they have a bit of a think and then they get in the zone and then it's like you're on a gimbal and it just did that it just had a quick think about it and then it went super smooth delicious gorgeous amazing i've only had time with this lens arriving to just do this very quick first look but i will do a more in-depth video ASAP. Now this lens is 995 grams, which makes it 150, 170 grams less than the 85. So that is a significant weight saving. It is 139.5 millimeters long. So it is very similar in size and we'll line up a few different lenses here at the end so you can see what it looks like, but very similar in size in length to the 85 1.2. It is an 82 millimeter filter thread, which is something that we've seen across quite a lot of the S-Class lenses. It has an extraordinary 11 aperture blades. Minimum focus distance is 82 centimeters, which is just shy of three feet. The lens feels great. We do have this function ring here that of course you can program to do all sorts of different things. We do have the two function buttons as well which can be programmed and that's really great that this one's for this one's for portraiture this one's for landscape and the focus ring feels really nicely dampened as does the control ring here at the back traditionally the aperture ring and we do have the switch here on the side which allows us to go between manual focus and autofocus gorgeous lens and it looks terrific here on the Z8. Now let's compare this lens with a few of its siblings. Okay, well we can see it here compared to the 85mm 1.2 and the 24-70 2.8. And they're actually all pretty similar sizes. All right, everybody, well I can't wait to hear what you think about the fact that Nikon has delivered the first of the exotics. What I think will be the first of the exotics. Of course, the Noct was an exotic right back at the start of the Z line. What we see here is the start of lenses that everybody can use. This is a fully autofocus, 
fast autofocus. It has a magnetically controlled aperture ring to keep it smooth for videographers. It's got super duper handling when it comes to the dampening of focus rings and function rings along with the function buttons. This is clearly pretty much a knocked level lens, but for everybody. And the exciting part is it doesn't have a knocked level price. This lens is coming in at around 4,200 Australian dollars. Now, I don't know what the conversion to US will be, but that might make it somewhere between two and a half and 3,000 US dollars. It's actually cheaper than the 85 millimeter 1.2. But more exciting than the price and this particular lens is the fact that I believe Nikon is now showing us truly, truly what the Z mount is capable of. And this is not the end of the story. This is the beginning, I think, of an exciting new story that is going to unfold from now on. And I can't wait to show off to you what this lens is capable of. I really look forward to your thoughts in the comments below about this exciting new exotic from Nikon. And if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share, and please like this video. I think this is a very exciting moment for Nikon users. All right, bye for now.